What is a good book on multivariable calculus? This is a question that I always get. My answer is usually, hey, check out the book by Stewart or the book by Larson, as those books do cover functions of several variables and the calculus behind them, as well as vector calculus. This is a book that is completely devoted to vector calculus, so it is superior to those books in the sense that it is the main focus of the book. You're going to get, honestly, better examples in this book than in those books when it comes to this topic. The author, Susan Jane Coley, Collie, I'm not sure if I said that correctly. She is wonderful. I've never met her, but I love her book. And I wanted to share this book with you today here on the channel because I don't think it's a popular book, but I think it's a remarkable book written by someone who obviously is remarkable at explaining mathematics to other people. Let's just open it up and take a look at the contents. And this is going to give you more examples. So if you already have one of those big, thick calculus books, you can get this book and you can use this to learn more and really help solidify those topics. Also, before we look at the contents, let me just emphasize this. This is usually taught in a Calculus 3 course. So if you're in college, you would take Calc 1, Calc 2, then you would study Calc 3. You would study Vector Calculus. However, it's usually taught um, at the end, like a lot of the topics are covered at the very end of the course, and they're often not covered or they're omitted simply because there's no time in class to cover those topics. This will help fill those holes that you might have in vector calculus, and that's why I highly recommend this book. Let's just open it up. To Will and Diane with Love, that's the dedication. And this one uh, is from 2002 and 1998, so I guess 1998 is probably the first uh, printing of this book, I believe. This is the second edition. And there is the legend about the author Susan Coley is currently the Andrew and Pauline Delaney Professor of Mathematics at Oberlin College. Cool. Having previously served as chair of the department. That's really interesting. I had a, a friend on the internet. He studied at Oberlin. I think he was a music major. He was a really smart dude. We used to hang out in this chat room and talk about stuff back in the early 2000s. So here's the contents. Vectors vectors in two and three dimensions. So very similar to a Calc 3 class. You would typically start a Calc 3 course with vectors. And then right away, differentiation in several variables. And then vector valued functions. Okay, I'm just looking at the topics there very carefully. Maxima and minima in several variables. Turn the page. So very consistent with what's taught in a Calc 3 course. You could, you could use this if you're a teacher. You could use this to teach a, a Calculus 3 course. Multiple integration, line integrals. This is where it starts getting a little bit harder for students. Um, you know, the, the books, the other books, the Stewart books and, you know, the Larson book and the Thomas Calculus book, all those big, thick calculus books, they have these topics, but you need more examples, and that's what this book gives you. Surface integrals and vector analysis. And then eight, vector analysis in higher dimensions. That's kind of nice. You're not going to see that. Uh, in those other calculus books. This is a little bit extra, which it's really nice that uh, Susan threw this in here. And you have answers to selected exercises. So most calculus courses might stop at Stokes, and, and that would be it. If, if you make it that far, honestly, if you make it that far. A lot of calculus courses don't. What some schools do, at least in the U.S., is, and there's a few of these, not many, they do like a Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3, and they do a Calc 4 just to make sure they cover these topics. And if you're wondering why, why aren't they covered, like you take the class, a lot of people say, oh, you know, I, I paid for the class, we should cover it. There, there's a balance, right? Like when you're teaching a class and you have, you know, 30 students or 200 students, you don't want to go over too much material because you don't want to overwhelm people, right? I mean, they're people, they're there to learn and you don't want to make it a bad experience for everyone who's trying to learn. So you want to like go at a comfortable pace and, you know, teach what you can and teach it well is the idea. At least in my view, you know. Uh, people are there to learn in college, and so you want to do the best you can to help those people. So if you go too fast or you cover too much material, you know, you're just it's just not good. It's not good for anyone. It's not good for you because the students are going to be frustrated. It's not good for the students because they're not going to learn and they're going to be frustrated. It's better to uh, to cover less and cover it well, in my opinion. And that's why self-study was invented. Let's take a look at some of the examples. Let's jump to like the deeper stuff. Let's let's go let's go back there to like let's go to Stokes. Let's look at Stokes theorem because that's here we go, Stokes and, and Gauss's theorem. So here's Stokes' theorem. Down here, here it is. Stokes' theorem. 
Let S be a bounded piecewise smooth oriented surface in R3. That's the uh, three dimensional plane, R cubed. Suppose that the boundary of S consists of finally many piecewise C1 simple closed curves, each of which is oriented consistently with S. Let F be a vector field of class C1 whose domain includes S, and then you have this equation here. So that's um, Stokes' theorem, and they give you an example right away. It's with the paraboloid defined over the disk in the xy plane of radius 3, and they give you a nice illustration here. Okay. And S is defined for z greater than or equal to 0 only, and then um, boundary of S consists of the circle. There it is right there. Yeah. Pretty cool, right? And then here they go through the process and they go through the computation. So it, this might seem like, you know, completely insane to you if you don't know this stuff already. But like, when once you learn it, once you understand it, once you get this far in a calculus course, it is extremely helpful to have examples like this. There's videos on YouTube um, about this stuff and there's videos on the, and there's examples on the internet on different websites that are pretty good actually. But you always want more examples when you're learning because that way you can get through the exercises on your own and do even better. Here's another example. Consider the surface S defined by that equation there. Yeah, another example. Let's turn the page. So, so far we have two examples and they're fully worked out. Pretty good. And then it goes into Gauss's theorem. So most, most books are going to have this, right? Most books are going to have this. What makes this book special is that the whole book is devoted to it. And I think that makes it extra special in my mind. Also, the explanations are pretty good, and the examples are clean, and it's just a well-written textbook. You know, it's, um, as far as the price of this textbook, I don't recall how much it cost. I will definitely try to find it before I post this video, and I'll leave a link in the description like I always do. I don't think it's that expensive because I don't think it's that popular. Like I, I, um, I, I don't think this is a book that's you know, like widely used today. I don't really know. I don't really know. I've, I've don't know of anyone who's ever used this book. Um, I'm the only person in the world that I know that has it. I don't have a lot of, you know, I don't have a big circle of people who collect math books other than, you know, people here on the internet. And I don't know what you have in your library. So if you have this book, uh, you know, leave a comment. I'd be interested in knowing if you, if you have this book. Here it defines uh, partial derivatives. The partial derivative of f with respect to x sub i. Interesting. And there's that limit. Very similar to um, the definition for the derivative of a function of a single variable. By definition, the partial derivative is the instantaneous rate of change of f when all variables except the specified one are held fixed. In the case where f is a scalar valued function of two variables, we can understand the partial derivative of f with respect to x at a, b geometrically as the slope at the point with the coordinates a comma b comma f of a b of the curve obtained by intersecting the surface z equals f of x y with the plane y equals b is shown in figure 2.45. And there's that figure there. So that is the geometric interpretation of the partial derivative of a function of two variables, right? Right there, there you see it. Um, of the partial derivative of f with respect to x. So you can see exactly what it is, right? It's the slope. It's the slope of that curve that you get when you intersect when you intersect this surface with this plane. And Coley explains it here in this book, which is amazing, right? It's amazing. And most books do. Most books have a similar picture. That is a really good one. <laughs> so I've seen other pictures, and I think this one's a little bit better or pretty close to the other ones I've seen. So stuff like that, just really clean, really good, really good pictures and explanations. Um, she does an excellent job. I'm sure she's like an incredible teacher. So yeah. I just wanted to show you one of the books from my collection. Um, so if you're trying to do some self-study and you're looking for a good vector calculus book, I think this one is really good. Um, if you've already had some calculus, you'll be able to jump into it right away. A lot's going to be review. This is also great for anyone who is taking Calc 3 and is looking for a supplement, but worth getting it, especially if you can get it cheap. Um, what's cheap? That just depends, right? Everyone has different definitions of what's expensive and what's not. I'm pretty cheap. Pretty sure I didn't pay... Uh, too much for this and I don't know if there's a newer edition. I will see what I can do and I'll try to leave a link in the description in case anyone's interested. So yeah, kind of a nice book to add to your collection um, if you are looking for a nice book on vector calculus with nice explanations. It's a newer book, right? 98 was the first edition. So it's not like an old vintage book. It's got great anima uh, animations, great graphics, great pictures, great explanations. Um, 
It's got good exercises and it's got answers. Let's look at the answers really quick to show you how many answers it has. It's got some answers. Answers to selected exercises. So it's like they looks like they do the odds. A lot of times when they say odds, what what'll happen is they'll do the odd exercises in the answers and then they'll omit some, like they'll omit some of the proofs. Perhaps that's why she chose to say selected. I've noticed that a lot in textbooks. They'll say answers to selected, but it's like it's almost all the odds, but not quite. So that's often the thing, right? Because they don't want to say all the odds and then it's not there because then they're lying to you, right? So sometimes they'll say selected and it's it's all the odds and a couple are missing. Sometimes it says selected and there's very few. That also happens, especially in a lot of older, harder, more advanced books. Oh, oh, look at this. Look at this. There's a price on the book. Look. So new book, $90.75. So someone must have paid that uh, in, what was it, 2002 for this book. So that's that's quite a bit of money, right? But it's a good quality book. I got to sniff it. I just got to give it a whiff. Ah, oh, smells good. This is one of those books. Someone told me they have like coded pages. So I'm not sure if it'll ever turn yellow. We'll see. We'll see what happens in 10 years. There's Fubini's theorem. Ah, so much mathematics. It's wonderful. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this video and keep doing math, right? Keep doing math. Have a great day and good luck.